Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons making games, and welcome back to Ways the Game Maker's new Surface formats can make your life easier. So, uh, recently in the February of 2023 Game Maker update, Game Maker has added support for different Surface formats, and those are going to let us do a number of things, but uh, the one that I care about most right now is that we now have a much easier way to encode depth to a Surface, which means that techniques such as uh, rendering shadow maps uh, has become quite a lot easier. So today I'm going to update the um, the shadow mapping videos that I posted a while ago, and I'm going to simply talk about uh, ways that we can simplify the code a little bit. Now, I made a few videos on surface formats already, and I'm not going to do anything like um, really groundbreaking here. If you already have seen the first two videos, you probably uh, don't need me to tell you exactly how this is going to work. So I'm going to go to the shadow map surface that I created, um, down here at the bottom of the camera's create event in this example, and I'm going to add the third parameter to the surface create function, and this is going to be the surface format. So I want this to be surface underscore r32 float. So the surface that we're using now for shadow mapping now is, um, is going to store a single 32-bit floating point value instead of a series of, um, 8-bit ints. And let's see, there is, oh, where is the, uh, SHD underscore depth, here it is. This is the shader that renders the depth to the shadow map. So I can get rid of two depth color. Um, I can uh, I can give that a value of zero, of, of the uh, depth value zero, zero, and one. None of the additional three uh, values are going to really be rendered onto the, um, onto the shadow map surface, but I do want alpha to be one, uh, just to ensure that no strange alpha blending shenanigans happen. And uh, that's only half the job. I don't need to run the game yet. Uh, in the basic 3D stuff shader, so this is where the shadow map is actually read from, um, I'm going to... I can maximize this code window. I don't need all the other stuff on the side of the IDE uh, taking up space. Uh, when we sample from the depth texture, uh, the depth value is going to simply be... Uh, the vec4 that we sample from the depth texture dot red. And once again, we don't need any of this... Uh, from depth color shenanigans going on there. Uh, that's not something that I need to um, to make this work anymore. And I can now run the game. And the uh, the depth surface in the corner of the screen isn't really being rendered as anything very interesting. Hey. Um, unfortunately, right now. But we can now see that we have shadows rendering just as we did before, and with somewhat less work. Uh, this is one of the uh, the rare occasions where uh, you can make a change and it's both less work for you as the programmer and it's also less work for the computer, so it's less computationally expensive. Um, encoding depth as a color wasn't super heavy uh, before the way that we had it, but it was a few extra math and vector operations that didn't really need to be there. And if you can get rid of them for effectively free, uh, there's no reason not to do that. So there is one more thing that we can now do when we're rendering depth to a color like this, and that is... Um, when we sample from the shadow map, uh, where am I setting that texture stage? Uh, when we sample from the shadow map, uh, we can actually smooth it out just a little bit by saying GPU set text filter extended. And we can set the texture filtering from the, uh, the sampler index uh, that the, the depth texture is being bound to. And we can set that to use uh, linear texture filtering instead of nearest neighbor. And we couldn't really do this before um, when we were sampling from our shadow map because uh, like the red, green, blue, and alpha values would all get interpolated and that would sometimes produce uh, strange, strange looking results uh, that you don't really want. But now, uh, now that we're sampling just a single value from the texture map, you can turn texture interpolation on and it will be slightly smoother. It still won't be perfect. Um, there are still other ways that you can uh, smooth out smooth out the edges of, of shadow maps and that sort of thing. But uh, the edge that we have now is smoother than it was before. Uh, this is going to be like an after and, and before uh, screenshot, I guess. Uh, let's see if I comment this out and then look at that exact same shadow. We can see that we can see that they're definitely blockier. So that is uh, another advantage of doing this that you might entertain. Um, but all in all, that is 
uh, an easier way to render shadow maps and to process shadow maps in your games. Uh, I'm going to end this off here. I will have the code for this in the video description. I will have the... Um, this is going to be in the original uh, shadow map and tutorial repository, but I'm just going to have it on a separate branch. Um, and the original code will be in, on the main branch. I'm going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. Uh, one tutorial tutorial like this and one let's make a game. This week might be a bit of an exception because uh, the three videos that I have this week regarding um, surface formats are not going to be super complicated. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gamer Player, Harold Guidry, Manta Ray, Project 103, Rowdy Coder, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, V Tro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.